Keaton is not so sure about Batman in Flashpoint. I smell shit! I don't know about you, Brian, but I just feel like Keaton doesn't... I think he enjoys what goes on in Marvel and in other studios. Then to go into a situation like this and it not working out. Because you can't tell me, oh, I don't know if I'm going to die if I go because of COVID. My brother, they have vaccines for you to take. You'll be all right. I know you got other things that you want to do. We're not going to, we're not asking you to be in the whole joint. You're probably, your, your, your film, your, your screen time will probably be like, or your filming will probably be like two weeks, a month, maybe. It sounds fishy to me. What are your thoughts? <laughs> so you, you frame this as he's not sure. And my answer is no, he is sure. <laughs> he's putting out to the world in a way that he gets, he can let them off easy. I don't think he wants to do this. Yeah. I mean, the, the, there's this, this whole thing is a rambling, like, <laughs> oh, it's been sitting on my desk. I must have missed the other 10 <laughs> Michael Keaton projects that came out in the last 12 months. Sitting on my desk, I haven't had a chance to look at it. Yeah, okay. And then, oh, I can't go to the UK. I might get COVID in the UK. I, come on. Yeah. Come on. This, this has all the makings of yeah i was interested and now i'm not but i'm michael keaton i'm the original batman so it's not as easy for me as it was for billy crudup to say i'm out <laughs> exactly speaking of which rob Liv ron livingston has replaced him i don't know if i don't know if he's working i haven't seen him in anything they probably gave him a call and he said, why not? In his office, it's probably in still that office, <laughs> in office space 20 years ago. That's where they found it. Why not? You know, and he just is gonna, he's just gonna do it. I mean, like, listen, I wasn't too much of a fan of him doing it or being Batman again, unless they were doing a Batman Beyond film. That's where I was going to be hyped for, for him doing. But Flashpoint, I was always hype on Jeffrey D. Morgan doing it. And then that didn't come to pass. Again, is WB separating themselves for whatever Zack Snyder did and wanted to get away from it. Um, so I, I, I don't know if this gets done now. This, this is up in the air now. I don't think Keen does it. The only thing I can't figure out is this movie is supposed to be close to shooting. So presumably Bruce Wayne and Batman are in this movie. So to our prior discussion about recasting, you can't just go find Ron Livingston to play Bruce Wayne. Yeah. So I don't... The only other possibility I could think of is he wants a bigger bag to go over there and maybe yeah. that's a part of it but yeah. this movie has had so many setbacks and so many changes and as we know cyborg was supposed to be riding side salad on this and he's he's completely out of the film now so i don't know what they could do in a multiverse setup in a flashpoint storyline to just get rid of or write out batman but I, it seems I, tough i don't know what this flashpoint movie is going to be because it doesn't seem like Gal Gadot is going to be in it, which was Wonder Woman was a big part of it. I don't know if Jason Moore is going to be in it because Flashpoint, he, Aquaman was a big part of it. Now Keaton is talking about, I don't know, Cyborg. I feel like was supposed to be in it at one point too. And he is or is not now. Do we know? Who? Affleck was supposed to be in it at some point too. And then he kind of maybe is or is not that we don't know. So I don't if he was gonna show up, it would probably be the last scene where he gets a letter from his pops, because that was a beautiful moment. And I love that moment in the mm -hmm. Flashpoint Paradox. Um and if we already discussed that Supergirl will probably be the one to replace Superman yeah. um in that story. Uh so 
I don't know, man. Again, Cyborg was a big part of that Flashpoint. I don't know what Flashpoint storyline we're going to get. It's already cheapened for me because he's already done this reversal of time already. You know, and it's like, whatever. Let us know what you think about Keaton not being sure anymore about doing Batman or saying the words, I'm Batman. That would be, that would, you know, I was looking forward to seeing that. Or hearing him saying it, I'm Batman again. Hey, look, if he wants, if he wants to do anything in that part ever again, I'm, I'm always there for it. Like Batman, yeah, B- Batman Beyond, Batman Beyond. I would love to see him in Batman Beyond. Uh, next up, Black Adam, releasing in 2022, July 9th. No, July 29th. Sorry. Over the weekend, uh, seems like. The Rock got on the phone and told WB, I want the entirety of Times Square billboards to display this message to everyone. Right? And he says, the hierarchy of power in the DC universe is about to change. Now, you can sort of take it as there is is no one in the WB office that's going to tell him how to edit, what to shoot. This is the rock set. This is the rocks movie. I cannot picture anyone telling him that this scene has to come out. I just don't see it happen. We also got um, Pierce Brosnan cast as Dr. Fate. We got a, you know, we have a, 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 a big cast of a lot of characters, my feeling towards it still hasn't changed, although Pierce Brosnan, Brosnan and Dr. Fate is a dope cast. I think he'll be fantastic. Pierce Brosnan is just is dope. But I still don't see how this movie is going to be dope. What are your thoughts? Um, July 29th is somewhat significant. Um means they think it's a really big tentpole movie. That's the middle of the summer. You don't put movies in July 29th unless you think a billion dollars, you know, 800 million, something big is in play. If yeah. normal, assuming we're normal and fully reopened. Yeah. That would also be a step up from what The Rock usually delivers in box office for this kind of movie, typically his biggest box, he's been in the ensemble, right? The Fast and Furious movies. So you can't really yeah. give him full credit for that. He's usually good for more of the 500. To seven. I guess Jumanji would probably be the only other one, but that also was a property that had already been built before he joined it. Yeah. Um, I remain skeptical as you. Uh, Pierce Brosnan is a great actor. I don't know that this is a great role for him. We'll see. It's not exactly what I envisioned as Dr. Fate, but, you know, maybe he can pull it off. I didn't even know Dr. Fate was going to be in the movie. <laughs> you know, why not? I mean, well, if you're going to do Justice Society, though, Dr. Fate has always had connections to the Justice Society, so I could see that making sense. You know, I think it... As always, you know, to your point, it comes down to what is The Rock willing to share in terms of the limelight, in terms of the scenery, in terms of the script, in terms of the action. Is he going to let himself get hit? I mean, you know, when he was, part of what made him legendary as a wrestler is he sold getting beaten up in some of those matches. He doesn't do that on screen. To the point where he and Vin Diesel, part of their feud was had to do with who could be on top, who could (laughs) hit who during the fight. He didn't ever want to be, you know, so... He's going to have to allow that. He's going to have to seem vulnerable, even though this character is kind of not. So, I don't exactly. know. Exactly. Yeah. It, it has the feel of something that will strain believability. It won't be bad, because I've always said The Rock rarely gives you outright bad. Mm-hmm. But he lives to me kind of like when he's not in like the Fast Five and in that sort of world, he kind of lives between like B minus and B plus. I can't really think of like a solo movie he's done where you're like, that is 
rewatchable, genre defining, and unforgettable. I don't think he has that on his resume. Yet. Yeah, I mean, he's he's had he's he's listen. He's I think The Rock is a is a great actor. Uh, I think he's a good actor. I I I I, I liked him in um, what's that football movie when he was with Great Iron Gang? Yeah, I love that movie. That movie was dope to me. I think he did a fantastic job with that movie. Um, I liked Walking Tall. I mean, there's some movies that I liked about that I liked The Rock in. Um, but then after that, it was just. But if he, but like, okay, but if he's the modern day Schwarzenegger, he doesn't have the Terminator. He doesn't have, have a predator. predator. He doesn't even really have Commando. And I've he said this in, lives. I've said this in, like, in two years ago on a show. I said this. He doesn't have Predator. Go ahead. So, to me, he like he more has a lot of raw deal on his resume. Red <laughs> heat. No, I'm serious. I, I'm, I, I say no, no, that. no. Just, you're right. Those are not horrible. You're right. I'm just saying. No, that's no, you're right. What he puts out. <laughs> you're right, though. You're he right. Doesn't have the character to where you sit there and say, twenty or thirty years from now, we're going to compare mm -hmm. the next generation actor to that portrayal and that character. He doesn't have that. Yeah. And I'm just not convinced this is that character. My, I, I'll say this: that will this movie break the bank, meaning like it'll get to a billion dollars, maybe, possibly. My whole thing about this thing, man, and this is where I disagree with some individuals who would say, "Yeah, go ahead and do whatever you want." The WB will, you know, get directors to do this, do whatever you want. I'm not in that camp. Why? Because I'm spoiled with what Marvel has done. Again, I have to go to Marvel because they've done something that you look forward to everything that they're going to do. And I was just thinking about this the other day. How long has freaking Days of Our Lives been on TV? How <laughs> long has, what's this, the, the, the doctor film, um, not this, the film, the show? General uh, Hospital. General Hospital, another one. Um, the one that this guy was in is well, a late Grey's night. Anatomy? Grey's Anatomy. How long has that been on? 20 years, I think. Yeah, almost. Marvel is giving you a superhero soap opera to go on pretty much forever, almost. In our lifetime, we're, we're going to continue to see Marvel films and shows because they build this universe. Because you, when they say something, you can reference that to something else. And it's that connectivity that makes it so exciting to keep going and bringing these stories from the comics to life and continuing. And with DC, doing whatever you want just doesn't work for longevity purposes. Probably to make some money, yeah, you'll make money. But fans, it's not enjoyable for me. I, I enjoy for a moment. It's a roller coaster ride. I'm done with this. But with Marvel, I can keep watching 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 so that's that's what i mean would it be it is gonna it's gonna be dope to see i i'm not gonna front it'll probably be dope to see but in terms of story in terms of longevity is there something to look forward to after that possibly in shazam which i'm not uh, i'm not one of those people that think that shazam was amazing or it was dope it was reviewed well but it wasn't Oh my God, I got to see the next one. I got to see what that worm is going to be. No, 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 no. Nah, it wasn't Shazam, like I mean, Shazam, Shazam was nice. For lack of a better analog, Shazam is Ant-Man. I mean, maybe, I don't mean that. Maybe that's disrespectful to Ant-Man, but I don't know. I just think like it was lighthearted. It was meant to be lighthearted. It achieved its mission at a decent box office on a lower budget. Yeah. And... They got Helen Mirren for the sequel, which is actually pretty cool. Shouts yeah. to Helen Mirren for Bucket List, Fast yeah. Furious franchise, <laughs> and a comic book villain. Nice work at like age 80, I believe. But, yeah. um, you know, when it, coming back to Black Adam and the Justice Society, you know, and again, this is not, this is no disrespect to The Rock. It's the challenge for them, and I think where we are in the genre is you have this wealth of stories to draw on. It's up to you to be creative enough to present it to us and make us care. Like, yeah. If you had told us in two make us care. That's that it. That's what it. If you had told us in two thousand and eight, 
you're gonna care about a CGI raccoon and a talking tree. You'd have been like, what the F are you talking about? Yeah. But we got, by the time we got to Guardians, it somehow felt really natural and really kind of original. Yeah. And that's what I mean is, you just have to find a, a niche, a direction to take characters like Hawkman, like Dr. Fate, like Black Adam and say, look, we're presenting them in an original way, but using the material, the source material that's in the comics. And yeah. if you can do that, awesome. If you can find your version of the boys or Umbrella Academy and do it with these characters, then you will have a billion dollar property and a multi-film franchise. Yeah. If you just churn out formulaic, hey, hey, we got these characters finally on screen, it dies with one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let us know what you think in the comment section below about uh, the Black Adam. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people whom I've speak, spoken to anyway that are, are excited about this film. And I'm, you know, I'm I'm curious to see what this is going to look like. I, I doubt that The Rock is going to give us something mediocre in this. I, I'm pretty sure he feels the pressure of delivering something fantastic. But I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Let us know in the comment section below. Suicide Squad trailer came out a few days ago. We saw some fun uh, little scenes in it, some jokes that, that were there. I mean, it seemed like classic James Gunn to me, right? It, it's reminiscent of Guardians almost in a, in a rated R sort of, sort of way. Um, I don't know what, listen, I don't know if you've seen the flash, right? Have you seen the flash shows? Oh yeah. The, 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 the show, uh, the WB, have you seen the flash shows? You've seen the shark on there and the thinker? I saw King shark. I'm not yeah. current on the show, but I saw King shark on yeah, flash yeah. when they first introduced it back in season what was it two or three. Yeah. Two or three. I believe it was. The way they show it there is like way better, I think. And the thinker was like straight out the comics. It looked phenomenal. I don't know what this is going to be. Uh, as many of you already know that uh, Sylvester Stallone is the the, the guy is, uh, is he's King Shark in this. So I'm pretty sure he's going to provide a lot of laughs. This is a film that you're going to go and have fun with. Yeah. That's about it. What were your thoughts on this trailer? I think it will be successful because I think James Gunn understood how to straddle the line between if you know the suicide, I would love to get Alex's take on this at some point. If you know, my understanding though is if you know the Suicide Squad comic, you will really vibe with the trailer because it really is the spirit of the comic. Yeah. But it's mainstream enough with the action and the goofiness and and the effects to where a wider audience, maybe similar to Guardians, can latch onto this for different reasons. Some will go for the performances or favorite actor or actress. Some will go for the kind of sheer almost absurdity of yeah, something yeah, like yeah. King Shark and how he's acting. But yeah, no, I think this will I think this will do exactly what it's supposed to do and James Gunn as usual does seem to have captured the essence of yeah. what he's going for. I will say it did nothing to diminish my excitement for Peacemaker because Cena was pretty oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Peacemaker and what he says and does in this film. And then after that in, in his um, solo show on, uh, on HBO Max in next year, I believe. Or when is it that they start shooting? They already started shooting, right? No, Beastmaker comes out early next year. It's okay. already been shooting. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So yeah, that's, that's going to be fun. So yeah, let us know what you think about uh, the trailer for the Suicide Squad. Are you guys looking forward to it? I'm sure you are. Because this is going to be a fun ride. This is definitely, yeah. that's where it definitely will be. Um... Before we get into the Marvel stuff, I just want to talk about the Godzilla versus Kong trailers. And the and, toys. Can we talk about the, the toys? And the, the toys. I added the toys, man. And, and 122 million in China. 
it's doing big numbers. Yeah. But one of the things that got me a little bit upset is that the art of trailers for some reason has been lost. Yes, I agree. To show a piece of something or a, or a surprise that you would have been so pleasantly surprised to see in the film, rather you, you see it in the trailer. I equate it to the same thing that happened with Aquaman. When you show his classic suit, that moment that he t puts on the suit, when I was in the film, when I was in the theaters watching Aquaman and I saw that shot, crickets. Yeah. Crickets. That was supposed to be the money shot. And they gave it away. And this is no spoiler. If you've seen the trailer and if you're... Listen, you've heard it enough that it shouldn't be a spoiler. Mecha Godzilla was in one of the trailers. It was like here, Mecha Godzilla. And it's like, yo, come on, man. It doesn't make me not want to see the movie, but it's that 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 bit of excitement. At least keep it a rumor. I don't know, but don't show it, man. Like, really, yo? This upsets me, like, really. Brian, this is upsets me, like. Like, come on, man. It's like telling me the ending of a book that I want to read. In the, in the, in the freaking, in the, you know, the back of, it tells you what the book is about almost. They give you, and then they tell you what happens or who tell you who's, it's like, come on, man. Really? You're going to, you're going to, that upset me. Although, you know, I, it comes out tomorrow. Most likely I'll be watching it tomorrow. What are you, what are your thoughts on this? So this was a slippery slope and it touched, I, I mentioned I'm mad at the toys. So can we talk about the toys? Cause this is where this started. Okay. okay. So this was basically a four stage leak of this plot point. And we had mentioned Mechagodzilla when we first saw the trailer, we were breaking it down. It was kind of fun to talk about, wait, is he actually fighting Godzilla? Yeah. And you know, the legacy and the mythology and all that fun stuff. So the toy line comes out. Why does a toy line have to come out before the movie? This happens, and I'm going to go back to something else in a second. So the toy line comes out. And guess what one of the toys is? It's Mecha Godzilla. So everyone shoots a picture, gets tweeted out, goes viral. People are like, wait, there's a Mecha got fully designed robotic gun. So to Adam Wingard's credit, who's the director of this film, rather than play dumb or he's like he literally tweets out a picture of himself <laughs> with the toy saying guess it's out cats out of the bag admitting that is true which then leads to there's the trailer where you can sort of see the robot in his eye and then there's the trailer which they released only in china although you can find it on youtube which literally shows the entire robot coming in yeah. front of the base yeah. Yeah. So it was like a four stage just like reveal before you even get to the movies but it starts with the toys and i remember this happening when michael bay was doing transformers because everyone wanted to know what the transformers looked like and which transformers were going to be in the movie mm -hmm. and by the way they screwed up the designs of those pretty royally and i'm still waiting for my generation one transformers <laughs> movie i know there's another transformers movie coming and yes. someone just we talk about comic book. Can someone just take the G1 toys, and just modernize them and make them look like that on screen? I don't yeah. need giant spiders and insects. <laughs> like robots. But the toys came out. Yeah. And the toys design, people were like, those can't be the toys. Those can't be the designs. And then they had to admit that they were the designs and everyone was in an uproar that like Ratchet doesn't look like Ratchet and you know, Ironhide doesn't look like Ironhide. The Starscream doesn't look like Starscream. So yeah. the point is the toy line front running the film winds up ruining the appearance of these characters who are, you know, for a lot of people, like in that case, were part of my childhood. Yeah. I already knew exactly what they looked like before they showed up on screen. And that yeah. kind of zapped whatever kind of boyhood, you know, enjoyment or fantasy there wasn't there. 
And it's the same thing here. You know, it's the same thing here. And it doesn't mean I don't want to see it. I absolutely want to see it, but I'm with you. It's like, I'm waiting for the third act, knowing the big twist that's coming before I even sit down. And that stinks. Yeah, it really, it really like, it's like, come on, come on. You didn't need it to promote the movie. You have Godzilla and King Kong. If you cannot promote that on its (laughs) own, you shouldn't be in advertising. Whoever greenlit, I'm looking at you. If for any reason you see this, if you see this, you're an idiot for greenlighting something so... Like, if you were seeing it in the theater and you saw this for the first time, you would go crazy. Now, because you've seen it in the trailer already, it's like you're going to probably go not even a quarter of the way crazy. You're going to be like, oh, snap, you know, I'm excited. Yay. Now it's you've you've ruined it. You've ruined it. You should be fired. So it's funny. One of the classic films of all time, they did this. They went from perfect to ruining something like this. I don't know if you remember this. So Terminator 2, 30 years ago. Do you remember the year before they released this when they put out the teaser, which just showed him being manufactured in the factory? Mm. It was just a minute. Go on YouTube. It's just a minute of like the construction of the Terminator. And at the end, he says, I'll be back. And then it says next summer. That's all they showed you. Why? Because they didn't need to sell you on anything else. It was like, oh, they're making a Terminator sequel? I'm in, I'm there. And then the last trailer, they give away that he's the good guy. And that, you know, is it a classic film? Yeah, it's still one of the best movies of all time. Yes, yes, yes. yes, But they didn't need to tell you that. They could have actually kept in suspense whether he actually was the good guy until they had the showdown in the mall. You could have, you would have been at the edge of your seat for the entirety of the film just watching this unfold. But knowing what you knew because of what they released is like, you already know. You, I gotta sit two hours to see something I already know. Yeah. And that is just, it's like, I, I, it's upsetting, it, it's just upsetting. It's just upsetting. Let us know, do you agree? Let us know in the comment section below, please. I That's know you agree. More. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, come on. It's like, who's thinking, who's green lighting this stuff? All right. um, Let's go into the Disney World stuff. When I say Disney World, I'm talking about Marvel, Star Wars. Um, So a a few days ago, a day ago, actually, Russell Crowe has (laughs) been... Rumored or is or confirmed, he is. he's confirmed yeah. to be in Thor: Love and Thunder. But also, what has been confirmed, I think, is that he's going to have a small part. Yeah. Listen, I like Russell Crowe. I think he's a like he's he's uh you give him an A. You know, he's he's in that league. He's at the, the top of that tier in terms of actors. My favorite movie, Gladiator. After I saw Gladiator, he was like, there's nothing Russell Crowe could do. He was amazing in, 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 in American Gangster. He's, he's, he's amazing in everything that he does. The guy, beautiful mind, everything. I saw John Campion talking about it on his show the other day and then uh, oh, actually today. And I was thinking to myself, hmm, wouldn't it be wonderful if he was, even though it's a small cameo, if he's Galactus, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice if he's Galactus? That would be nice. But we don't know what he's. The, the supposedly is a secret. Whatever, who, whatever he's. I just hope it's not. You Matt hope he's da- not in the play. I hope it's not Matt Damon. I hope it's not. Yeah, I hope he's not. Cause come on, man. I hope this movie is not goofier. Thor, loving Thor, Ragnarok was 
it was a fun film. It was to me, it was a setup to what Infinity War was going to deliver. That gut wrenching ending, right? You have fun or whatever. I hope it's not more of that because to me, the first one was, was just a little bit too goofy for me. I just doesn't, I hope it doesn't get goofier. What are your thoughts on this news? I, mean, I hate to say it, but I think the, the odds would probably favor that he's in kind of a humorous small. I, I mean, the feel of this movie is that Taika Waititi has a lot of friends in Australia and they all want to drop by and kind of, <laughs> hey, you want to shoot a scene? Like that's what it kind of has that feel. Yeah, right. Um, and so I, I'm not going to get my hopes up. I mean, Galactus would be, feels early to me, to be quite honest. But um, yeah, I mean, well, why not? I mean, he's got everyone else in this movie. They, they might as well, they might as well have it. Uh, I'm with you. I think Ragnarok is probably the film that is the most consensus loved film in the MCU that you and I are kind of meh. It's yeah, okay, yeah. but it doesn't get there for us. Yeah. That being said, I, I think for Chris Hemsworth, it is part of his evolution in the character, which has probably been one of the more fun journeys from where he started as sort of the arrogant, youthful Thor to the repentant Thor to then sort of the comic wandering Thor to then the broken Thor. Yeah. And, you know, it, it is probably my number one fascination with this, even more than sort of the adaptation of the comics and, and Jane Foster and the cancer and, all, and her lifting the hem. It, it's really just where does Hemsworth go next with the character? Because he's yeah. done the most in terms of changing how we perceive Thor film to film. Yeah. And we ended Endgame in a very strange place with him. Yeah. So that's the most interesting part of this. But yeah, I'm not going to get my hopes up. This has the feel of an Easter egg cameo that is more for laughs than for I hope not, a multi-film meaningful part. I hope not. I hope it's something meaningful that leads to something um, later. Like something like Galactus would be fun, I think, because Galactus, Brian, I live for the moment that we realize Galactus on screen and Silver Surfer. I'm waiting because I wanted to actually do a show on that one one day. I, I was I wanted to do a show on this a long time ago, but I was never able to get it done. But one day I want to talk about how this film gets done. What would we like to see? Because Silver Surfer to me is one of the one of my favorite characters. And I don't know if you still haven't seen the Silver Surfer animated show on Disney. If you haven't, go check it out. When you, If you were a kid and you saw that, you were like, what the hell this, are they talking about? And I understand why they canceled it because the, you needed Webster's Dictionary in order to understand what the hell they were talking about. <laughs> but as an adult, you're like, this, is, this wasn't that bad. But you understand why they canceled it. Um, so yeah, it, if anything, just watch the first two episodes of that. It is the way you should do the genesis of Silver Surf on screen. Um, Captain Marvel 2 uh, starts filming in May. It seems like they're, you know, getting things rolling pretty quickly. Well, they're uh, up and running. They're up and running? I think they're up and running pretty much across the board now. And we didn't even talk about the release date schedule, but I think we're locked in at this yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we got Black Widow coming out uh, July. July 9th, I think. And then Shang-Chi coming out in September, correct? Yep, and the Eternals doesn't have to move. That's still in November. And then Spider-Man Far From Home is December. So you got four films in six months. So we're, we're locked. Yes. When we And we said it. I think before the year, before 2021, we said that 2021 was going to be jam packed. And so far is living up to that uh, prediction. The funny thing is that we were this, we were thinking when we were having our conversations regarding Black Widow, we were thinking, oh, is this going to be 
uh, movie only? Are they going to sit to just movie only? Are they going to just do, are they eventually just going to do Disney Plus because we might get a delay or whatever the case may be? So it has been confirmed that and everybody was waiting for this. Before there was a headline that it was a last minute decision. The decision came early. So it's going to be released on in, in the theaters and on Disney Plus, I think for like 30 bucks, right? Yeah, they're using the same cost price point they use for Raya and for Mulan. I think the only difference is theaters are now opening in California, New York. You mentioned China, which actually has had several films break box office records already this year. There was one local film that did, and then Kong versus Godzilla is doing really, really strong growth over the prior movies in the series. So maybe Black Widow will lose a bit of its box office muscle because yeah. of the, the 30 bucks. But I would yeah. think Disney probably has a pretty good beat on the total revenue they're going to get from this movie isn't going to be that far off from what they would have projected originally. That'd be my guess. They're probably going to get 60 bucks from me at the end of the day from Black Widow. I'm watching this movie a couple of times, maybe. Although sometimes, you know, because when I watch these movies, I'm like really like in tune. I, I like I remember pretty much everything that's going on in the movie. So I generally don't see, get to see it uh, again so soon. But man, am I looking forward to Black Widow. And I've always said in the past that Black Widow is going to be up there with Winter Soldier. One, perhaps, to me, the number one superhero film. And you are really high on this. I am. Yes, not yes, there. yes. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I think it'll be. I think it'll be. What are your thoughts on the the decision on releasing it in the theaters and on their streaming platform? I like it. I mean, I think it. it I think it got to a point where they couldn't push everything back another year, so two months they compressed the schedule. But they can get everything out this year that they intended to get out alongside the streaming shows and they're back on track come 2022. I think it's fantastic. I think it's funny in some ways that they mm -hmm. basically wound up doing the same thing that Warner Brothers did. Yeah. <laughs> and yet the response has been kind of different to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because they did it localized, right? They really did it for one, one film and then, you know, push Shang-Chi back. I am, of course, now officially on the lookout for you can't keep Shang-Chi hidden from us forever because now you got a final date. We yeah. need footage. We need a trailer. I'm telling you, everybody, so you got to start tagging or hashtagging release the Shang-Chi trailer. As as just as fiercely that you did release the Snyder Curse and uh, the Snyder Cut and release the Snyderverse, you got to do it with Shang-Chi because come on man this movie has been done a long time ago yeah. you know and 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 still nothing well now we're i mean now we're less than six months out and it's a final date yeah. so for a new character you know you can look at the calendar and try to figure out like where is this going to be placed so they can't do it with falcon and winter soldier so is it going to be with loki black widow in july is honestly too late it's going to have to come before that yeah 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 yeah, yeah yeah so yeah. I'm thinking probably within the next month. I think we get something within the next 30 days. Released on YouTube or, I mean, uh, it doesn't get released with some major event or anything? I don't know how they would pull it off. I was trying to look at the other schedule. I was trying to see, like, you know, because they got they have a Pixar movie coming. I was trying to find, like, what else they could attach it to. But it just feels like from a promotional standpoint, they have to get going. And so I kind of feel like five months ahead of time, four months ahead, you're really starting to cut it close for an initial trailer. So I think it's got to be the next 30 days if we get the material. Yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comment section what you think about this. Are you excited about Black Widow? I'm sure you are as excited as I am and as Brian is and any Marvel fan who is looking forward to this film. And do you think that this is going to be on par with The Winter Soldier? Because to me, it's simply number one. Simply number one. Um... The cast, 
for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series has been revealed. And man, what a cast. Brian, let's go over it real quick. Sure. Aaron McGregor, McGregor, he's great. We all know he's going to be great. Um, Hayden Christensen is the is 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 one of the X factors in this. He wasn't in his first outing. Everybody wasn't sold on his performance. I liked him better in Revenge of the Sith. I believe the, the movie was called the third outing uh, uh, of that trilogy. And um, he hasn't had a great career afterwards. Most would agree. You're not a big jumper fan. <laughs> I tried watching that. And man, I was waiting for somebody to call me so I can just get up and leave. I, I, there was, I had nothing else to do, so I, I just watched it. But it was a tough watch. I, I never, every time it comes on, it's like I, I try to skip it as much as possible. You were, um, you were waiting for Nightcrawler to jump in and be like, <laughs> and take me away. Um, so I've been looking forward to his return as Darth Vader. I, and I said it before that this return to this character, it's going to be bigger than the Mandalorian, than anything that we've seen so far that has been um, exciting for people to watch uh, in terms of viewership, it's just gonna be huge. Um, Moses Ingram, if you remember her from Queen's Gambit, she was great in that show. Um, Joel Ed Edgerton, um, a great actor. Um, so he's going to reprise his role, um, as Luke Skywalker's, uh, I believe caretaker, right? Oh. Then we have, I don't, I'm not too familiar with Bonnie Paisé. Well, she was Aunt Baru. Ah, okay. So they're just, they're, they're the same character. Got it. Were. Got it. Um, I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but Kumail Naji. Yes. Yeah. That dude is everywhere. He's going to be in the Eternals and he's going to be in Star Wars. That dude is, is, is killing it. I'm looking forward to seeing what character he portrays. Do we know? No. Good agent, though. Yeah. Way to, way to sign a contract and get yourself MCU or Star <laughs> Wars, man. How do I... Yeah, that's man. good representation. He's killing it. Um, Indira Varma, um, yeah. I've seen her in in, in, um, in quite a few things. Yeah, and, she's like and, a that person. Like you will recognize her the instant she's on screen, but you may not know her as a star or anything. Yeah, I, I like her. She she she's a great actress. Rupert Friend. Yeah, you'll recognize if, him too. Same. If way. you ever saw Homeland. He was the best part of whatever season he was in, season two or season three. I'm not sure, but he was fantastic. And he also played uh, the hitman in a film he starred in that wasn't that great, but he was he's he's always good. Uh, so I'm looking forward to to his performance. Um, we got O'Shea Jackson Jr., which is, I, I get. But yeah, he's a good actor. But what I'm concerned about, and hear me out, if I hear yo any slap, no, no. I, don't do I can't hear it. Not in the Star Wars world. You can't bring me back to Earth. I got to be in the Star Wars world. So that's that's my concern. Then you got Sun Kang. Who Justice for on. Yes. You got Simone Cassell and Benny Safdie. I, I, I'm not sure who these individuals are. I'm not, so Benny Safdie is actually, he's a director. So okay. the Safdie brothers who directed like Uncut Gems. 
Okay. Um, okay. Adam Sandler, Kevin Garnett. He's okay. one half of that. That probably is like a, I'm a lifelong Star Wars fan and I want a small role with one of them. That's probably what that is, but he has a little name recognition there. All right. So we got a hell of a cast. Brian, I'm telling you, when this comes out, everybody's going to watch this everybody <laughs> there's nothing to compete when this is out there's not going to be nothing on tv you're going to switch the channel it's going to be it's going to be a white noise <laughs> because that's going to be on how tell me your level of excitement for this show hot take i'm not that excited really why I'm not done with the character. I don't need it. And I, I got to be honest, like I just, look, I'll watch it. It's Star Wars. I'll watch anything that's Star Wars. But ladies and gentlemen, he says he's not excited. I bet you when this is all said and done, fine. he's going to be like, yo. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. I'm just saying, going in, my level of anticipation, yeah, it, it's, it's below my level of anticipation for Loki, which as you know, is not. Wow. wow. Um, here are my issues and my concerns. So number one is, you know, Ewan McGregor doesn't need to do anything more in this part for me. I think he, you know, he, he nailed it. He yeah. was young oh, Alec Guinness and young Obi-Wan. I don't, he, he can't do any better. So I don't want him to do worse. Mm -hmm. I have an issue with when this story is being set. I have a fundamental problem with it. Which now, is? maybe I will be dead wrong and they mm -hmm. won't prove this to me. Mm -hmm. But my understanding at the end of Revenge of the Sith was this dude wanted to lay low so that he would not get found out mm -hmm. by the end Newsflash, laying low is not an interesting TV series, which means he ain't gonna be laying low in this series. So if you're gonna give me a whole bunch of intergalactic stories where he's jet setting around the star systems away from Tatooine, by the way, my most overused planet in the Star Wars universe, it strains credibility that when we get to New Hope, this guy is somehow this hermit that no one's seen for 60 years. Yeah. So I have a fundamental issue with putting this story where they're putting it, which is 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. So that's mm -hmm. the second problem. Mm -hmm. Third problem is, I actually think it would have been more challenging and more rewarding for Hayden Christensen to come back to the role as Anakin, not as Darth Vader. But if it's 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, he presumably is going to be in the helmet and the suit and we're never going to see his face. Possibly. And it also means that it will be impossible for them to really share the screen together, which I think is one of the best things of their chemistry. Because if you put them in a fight scene, you will violate everything oh, about yeah. the canon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which means everything is going to be parallel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, my yeah. third issue. Yeah, yeah. I would rather have seen more of their adventures together before he turns if you were going to do this so that I could see the dynamic and sort of the mentorship or what have you. And I don't know. It, it, it is a great cast. I'm sure it's going to be done well. And I'm just not that fired up about it. Like I said, I, I gave you my flaws and my concerns and like why I don't need to see this time period played out. And I, you know, Those are honestly bad. would would rather see Ahsoka Tano. If he's going to be Hayden Christensen, have Ahsoka Tano do him. Like, I don't need to see, you know, I don't need to see this. So I will watch it. I'm sure it'll be good. But going in, it is relatively low for me. Uh, I, I, those are valid points. I am still curious to see because, I mean, he's on Tatooine to make sure that the secret of who this kid it isn't out. I think he has to go to great lengths to make sure that that secret doesn't get out as well as him being alive doesn't get out. So it's going to be interesting to see how he 
does that. Yes, I do agree that Darth Vader and him should not, there shouldn't be any knowledge. Well, they shouldn't be on the same screen together. If they do, yeah, it's definitely going to cause a lot of issues for a lot of Star Wars fans. I'm just looking forward to seeing Darth Vader be the ruthless Sith Lord. Uh, um, because I mean, although his his presence enough, the little things that he did, because he didn't have like, I mean, he had the major fight with Obi-Wan, with Luke, and then with Luke again. But outside of that, we didn't see how really bad. I mean, obviously Rogue the one. opening scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rogue one. That's yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's his peak as a yeah, 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 yeah. Unstoppable villain. I want to see more of that. I want to see because I've read stories. Um, I don't know if you ever not. I haven't read, but I've listened to to narration of, of stories of Darth Vader from um, Star Wars theory. He has a big YouTube channel. He has he has a, over a million followers. And he is a Star Wars uh, encyclopedia, if you will. And he does great narration of Darth Vader's adventures or whatever thing, whatever, whatever the things that he does in, in, in his quest or whatever. But um, I want to see that done on TV or however they've done it. I think it's going to be, to me, it's going to be dope. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm curious to see how this is going to look, and I'm excited to see what story they tell. And if it disappoints me, it disappoints me. It disappoints me, so, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, this leads me to this. Sebastian Stan, <laughs> and, I, and, and I think we've talked, about it very briefly in other episodes has said that he would play Luke Skywalker under one condition he would need the blessing of Mark Hamill for him to do or to play that character listen I'm all for it I think it's the only way you bring Luke Skywalker. I mean, and I get it. We're sort of done with this. This whole Skywalker thing, right? We're over it. But when Luke Skywalker came back in that episode of The Mandalorian, everybody was going crazy. Right? So I don't know what role and what capacity he would... I mean, I, I, it, it would be interesting to see what storyline he would be in a movie playing Luke Skywalker and, and what he would do. Uh, you know, it's hard to think about what 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 storyline they would go with, but I wouldn't mind seeing it. What Heir are your empire. huh? Heir to the empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. the tip. I think. Look, I mean, if you if you're gonna do this, and I'm with you, I think. Star Wars would benefit from breaking away from the Skywalker saga. Mm -hmm. So I think Mandalorian, we, we will find out their test is coming next season as to what they're going to do with that final scene. Was it really just a one-off or was it an intro to the character? Or a re-intro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're going to do it, Heir to the Empire is the logical place to go because that They've already teased Grand Admiral Thrawn. He is the villain of that. Mm -hmm. You get the OGs, so you'd have to recast Leia. You'd have to recast Han, re-recast -re Han, I guess, <laughs> yeah. now. Um, and you'd have, I guess, your ready-made Luke. And don't worry, Mark Hamill would bless that. He, he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that sort of lords over his character. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. want to yeah. see it. You also get Mara Jade. You get a lot of really classic stuff in those three books, which are generally very well regarded. So that's probably if you were going to do it. The problem then, of course, is you're basically making episode 10, 11, and 12 with the same storyline character. You know, so that's sort of the issue. But, mm -hmm. you, know, it, you know, it is hard. Yeah, yeah. When you watch Sebastian Stan 
and especially now because at least when he was winter soldier and he had the long hair and the mask right he didn't really you couldn't really see the skywalker resemblance now he kind of has the haircut we'll talk about the show next week yeah. so you kind of see him fighting and you see him use it and, and you're just kind of like yeah, I can sort of imagine the laser sword is right there and like I'm him just putting you, his hand up for his set of his metal arm and using the force and yeah. He's a one yeah, of these it's amazing how much of a spitting image and even vocally how much he sounds like Parker. If you told me he was his son, I would not have like like voice. Yeah, man. I, I I'll say this, man. He was meant to play that character if they were ever to do it again. Um, but you know, if they were to ever go back to that. Luke Skywalker situation, I would only want them to do it in a way that sets up the next generation, the future of Star Wars. I don't want it to be just stuck in there and then we still have to live with the remnants of whatever that last trilogy was because it really doesn't mean anything. Well, I told you Mandalorian, if they want to go Jedi Academy, that's the one out. I think they could actually get away with that because it's never been put on screen. Yeah. And if they wanted to have Luke, to your point, as more of the like Yoda from the original trilogy character, the one who you visit now and then, but he's not really front and center to the storyline, I think they could get away with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let us know what you guys think about um, Sebastian Stan taking over the Luke Skywalker character, man. Every you know, it's it's just not me. I'm not the only one thinking this. This has repeatedly over over times, ever since that appearance, people have done deep fakes on and it's like, yo, we want to see this, right? So let us know in the comment section below what you think of that possibility. Uh our final topic. This was announced just yesterday. I have nothing to say. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be over here relaxing. <laughs> while you talk about I know how long you've waited for this. Listen, I've been waiting for this possibility for a very, very long, long time. If there was any 80s cartoon movie that they wanted to bring to life this was one of those movies voltron we've spoke about it before That's you fine. and i yes. yeah um yes. thundercats that di the director for uh godzilla versus kong has been tapped to direct a thundercats film when I saw the headline, I, 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 I was in amazement for about 10 seconds, right? Then I started reading in turn, and this what this what has me concerned. The, 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 the movie Beowulf sort of just popped into my mind when I, when I read this. So this is not going to be necessarily a live action situation. This is going to be a lot of CGI and animation. I sort of get why, because you have to deal with a lot of acrobatic sort of cat-like movements. I would see how difficult it would be to pull, pull it off without it looking, you know, not like the Thundercats, you know, but I just have to say when the movies cats and then Wonder Woman came out, Wonder Woman 84, I said, there's no hope. I said, oh, my hopes are, 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 have died with these films, especially with cats. When cats came out, I was like, that's it. I said, done. The cats is done. It's not going to ever happen. Not now, any, anytime. But now they're doing this CGI animation. I don't know what this is going to be. That's what has me a little bit concerned, but I'm excited nonetheless for this to happen. What are your thoughts on this? I assume it is an offshoot of the animation techniques that were used in the Disney live action remakes for Lion King, Jungle Book, and the Andy Serkis directed Mowgli that was on Netflix. I think it's probably a derivative of that that he has in mind. 
That's my best guess as far as the kind of animation or animal-like movements, but in characters that have human qualities, and in this case have to look part yeah. human. Yeah. I mean, I will say, without having seen the full film, there's the visual representation of King Kong and Godzilla. I have no I have no quibbles so far. Yeah, yeah. So he clearly is able to put a giant creature with some personality on screen. Now I realize that's a different, a little different challenge, but same director. So you know, he clearly has a specific idea. I mean, yeah. he even said he wrote the first treatment of this. Oh movie. yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, he's so he, he, you know you are getting someone for whom it is their childhood dream. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I hear you. Like until you see concept art, until you see something that shows the animation technique, it might be hard to buy into what this is going to look like. Uh, although it will be fun to cast and <laughs> think about because this is happening, right? This is not a like in talks and development. Like he's been uh, given the green yeah, light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. But do you cast, I mean, obviously you're going to get voice actors, but do you cast the individuals that are going to look like? I think there's, be, I think there will be motion capture involved. So I think there will be a need for an actor. Similar, I guess, to Avatar sort of, right? Yeah, I think there'll be a need for an actor who is visually represented and certainly heard on the screen. That'd be my guess. Not in the next show, but possibly in other shows, I am going to give you my cast for this. I have because I've been thinking about this movie forever, so I know who I would want to play these characters. I know who I would want for Panthro. I know I who I would want for Lionel, Tiger, Ch Ch Chitara. Even though for Chitara, the person I have in mind, I don't. I doubt that she'll play. She has a tough time playing the Invisible Woman. Okay. So we'll see but yeah that's our show for today i know it was a long one but we had a lot to cover um because zack snyder took up most of the time again it was four hours so you know you can't put in news you gotta take two weeks worth of news and put it into one show so this was a tough one hopefully the next show we get get it under one hour but thank you for joining us on this show, please remember to hit that like, subscribe, that notification bell, and share with your friends. It really does help support the channel. Brian, any last words? No, I just that I think this was, has been a really heavy news period. So I think we try to put the Snyder Cut in its own show. We try to put the news in its own show. And yes, we are aware that Falcon Winter Soldier is out there. We are aware that Invincible is out there. But I think between that and Godzilla versus Kong, we're going to put that together and we'll do a lot of breakdowns and reviews kind of of those shows in the, in the next episode. Yep, 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 yep. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on Nerd Gen Report. Have a good night. <laughs>